Testing levels, testing levels one, two, three. Levels test, one, two, three. Good? Okay. Levels test, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two. One, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, test, two, three, four, five, six, seven, good levels, good levels. Commerce test, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two, three, four, five, all thumbs. <laughs> okay, test, test, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Test, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Test two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Test, test two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Test, test two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Test two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Test two, three, four, five, six. Test, test. Test two, three, four. Test two, three, four. <laughs> Test two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, test 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, good, good, okay, okay.
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 39th Annual Legislative Conference of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. This is our first session. We want to welcome you to Capitol Hill. Those of you who are around in the old days, you know that we used to have our conferences at, the, uh, at Capitol Hill, but then we outgrew Capitol Hill. Congresswoman Lee brought up the idea of why don't we kick off the conference this year with a day on the Hill where we can not only engage in discussions on the Hill, but also where you will have time to go and visit your uh, members of Congress. As we recognize that many of you come from districts that are not represented by Congressional Black Caucus members. So this will give you an opportunity to go and let those members hear from you because you'll see the Congressional Black Caucus members at the conference. But there are a lot of other members of Congress that may represent you and you need to make certain that they know that you are here and that you want to be heard. This session, which was the brainchild of Congresswoman Barbara Lee, the theme today is Opportunities for All, Pathways Out of Poverty. And we are very happy from the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation to be partnering with the Congressional Black Caucus to bring this forum to you. In, 19, in 2006, the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation produced a report, and I think we have copies available, or we will have copies available for you before you leave, on poverty, race, and pol pol policy. And in that report, we try to focus attention on the problem of poverty in the African American community. And we focused on three major areas, employment and wages, affordable housing, and wealth accumulation. And we tried to look at each of these areas and how they impact African Americans. We are in the process of updating that report because there are some initiatives that have taken place since 2006, some positive initiatives, but also there are some new reports that are showing that there are more of our families drifting into poverty. So we are happy that we will have this day. You will hear from members of Congress. You will hear from persons who are out in the trenches dealing every day with the issue of poverty. But one of the reasons why we wanted to start the conference with a focus on poverty, because so much of last year we talked about the middle class and we focused on the middle class. So we want to make certain that the least among us, the people who are at the bottom economically, that they understand that the Congressional Black Caucus and the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation still recognize their value and we are still focused on their concerns and trying to work to look at how do we bring them out of the pit of poverty. It is now my pleasure to introduce the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation the chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus. We have a Congressional Black Caucus Foundation and a Congressional Black Caucus. The chair of the foundation is Congressman Kendrick B. Meek from the great state of Florida. He has done a great job in his three years as chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. Please welcome him to the stage. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much, Dr. Scott, and good morning to everyone. Glad that you're here this morning. Um, what a it's so appropriate for us to um, remember and also reflect and educate one another on the work that's still this yet undone. Welcome to the 39th Annual Legislative Conference, Reinvesting, Rebuilding, Renewing. Um, as we know, we look at poverty, we look at what's happening right now and what has been happening in the past, and I can tell you even from my home state, where in, since 19, um, I mean, um, 2009, 40% of families in Florida will have an average income under 22,500. That is not necessarily what you see on the, on the tourism ads that run not only here in the Northeast, but throughout the country, but it's something that we all should pay very close attention to. I'm glad that not only our co-chairs, um, Congresswoman Clark and also Congressman Shaka Fatah, um, have worked so hard in putting together a great conference so that all of us will be able to really take part in what this foundation is all about. It's about educating and it's about making sure that we all know what's before us. And then it's up to you um, to carry out action. 
uh, need it be if you're a member of Congress or um, a member of the state legislature or a person that's working in the non-for-profit field to bring about change um, in your everyday job. So we want to make sure that we provide the kind of information that you need um, to be able to move forward. I um, want to tell you, as a member of the Ways and Means Committee, and I um, uh, serve on a subcommittee of Income, Security, and Family Support, uh, we have been having this discussion for a, uh, a, a little while now about what we can do as it relates to not only Social Security, but setting the economic tone as it relates to tax credits and helping communities build environments where we can bring people out of poverty. In 2000, 2008, more than, uh, um, more than w one in every eight Americans, that, that's 39.8 million people were counted as poor in the United States of America. Par the poverty rate in 2008 increased uh, from 13.2, which is up significantly from 12.5 the year before. I think it's also important to know under the official poverty definition, uh, the average family of four is considered poor in 2008 of its pre-tax cash income, which is below $22,000. We know that it's very, very important that we identify and recognize and give those Americans voice. They're white, they're black, they're Latina, they're Latino, they're Asian, they're Asian Pacific, they are Americans, and it's important that we focus on those individuals. I can tell you that um, children in this whole discussion of poverty plays such an important role, because the discussion that we have and the action that we take could break the cycle of poverty with them. And when we look at children, it really motivates us all, because spiritually, no matter what your a religious uh, faith may be, uh, is our greatest responsibility, making sure that our children and grandchildren have better opportunities um, than we've had. In 2007, 12.8 million children, that's 17.6, um, were considered poor of all children in the United States um, by the U.S. definition. So we have a lot of work to do, even though we do work abroad. But I want to give credit for this panel, the three panels that you will hear today. Uh, I want to give credit to not only the leader, um, uh, a leader in Congress, uh, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, but the leader of the Congressional Black Caucus. Um, as you know, Congresswoman Barbara Lee has been working for years on this issue of poverty in the United States and also working throughout the world to make sure that those that are in poverty find themselves fighting out of poverty. And I am excited in the fact that she had enough vision to s recommend not only to the full board of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, but also to the membership of the Congressional Black Caucus and um, the leadership of the Congress. And so we're going to have legislative leaders that are here um, that will share with you their perspective on how we break this cycle of poverty, but also um, allow you to um, hear, um, hear from you a little later on how we're going to uh, move forward from this point. So with that, I want to, to bring on the recently named chair of the United Nations Forum on Minority Issues, our chair, U.S. Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Give her a round of applause, <laughs> Oakland, California. Good morning. First, thank you, Congressman Mink, for that very warm introduction. Also, for your, your statement and your understanding, your, your real understanding about the issues of poverty and what our pathways out of poverty really mean. And under Congressman Meek's leadership, you all know that the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation has just soared. And so I just want to uh, thank Congressman Meek for his leadership. And would you give him another round of applause because he's very busy these days. And for him to be here all weekend, he's doing double duty. So thank you, Kendrick. Let me, um, 
also acknowledge my colleagues, Congressman uh, Bata and Congresswoman Clark, who are co-chairing this wonderful weekend. They have worked day and night to put together what is going to be a very inspirational and substantive and exciting five days. Thank you very much, Congressman Fata and Congresswoman. Where, where's Clark, Yvette Clark? Because they have worked, their staffs, let's give them a round of applause. The CBCF staff, Dr. Uh, Elsie Scott, Irene uh, in my office, I have to just say to Irene and to all of our uh, staff members, uh, they have worked not only doing their normal work, their, their real work every day, but they volunteer day and night to, to do the work uh, that you will see evolve and emerge this weekend. Let me um, just say a, a couple of things about our Hill Day Summit, uh, which is just a summit here on the Hill for the first time uh, since the ALC really outgrew the Capitol grounds many years ago. The theme of today's summit, uh, as Congressman Meek mentioned, uh, is opportunities for all pathways out of poverty. Let me say a couple of things. First of all, um, when I was sworn in as chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, I looked around and I said, we have 42 brilliant members of Congress. And we talked about what our theme would be for the next two years. And we talked about what's going on in our country. And unfortunately, more and more and more people are falling into poverty. And so we decided to have as our theme for the next two years, opportunities for all, pathways out of poverty. And so I asked each member to submit to me one bill. Now, believe me, members have 20, 30, 40 bills that they work on each and every day. But they submitted one bill that they thought was a key path out of poverty. And so we have a legislative agenda, and I hope you'll pick it up or it's in your packets, of 42 pieces of legislation which we're moving forward, which will create these pathways out of poverty. I was very proud of the fact that the uh, resolution which I introduced a couple of years ago calling for us cutting poverty in half in 10 years. It passed on a bipartisan basis on the floor of Congress. And so we're working now with the out of 10, half, half in 10 campaign to make sure we have as our goal cutting poverty in half in 10 years. So I ask you to join us in that effort. And I know today you will be hearing and discussing and giving us input on this overall agenda. Also, we formed a, an out of poverty caucus, co-chaired by myself and other members of Congress to really have a focus on these pathways out of poverty. And I have to just say to the foundation, the report that Dr. Scott talked about is a wonderful report. It, it provides many policy initiatives and legislative solutions. And so we're using information that the foundation has put forth in our overall legislative agenda. And so with this summit, we really do hope to uh, re-engage the conversation on the intersection of, as I said earlier, some very tough issues around race and poverty because they oftentimes go together. And redefine poverty as it currently impacts communities and discuss federal solutions, because again, we're talking about pathways out of poverty, federal solutions for disrupting the poverty pipeline. This year's theme, of course, for the overall conference is reinvest, rebuild, and renew. This embodies the spirit, really, of the Congressional Black Caucus's mission as we seek to work with our great president, Barack Obama, a former member of the Congressional Black Caucus, as we seek together with you to put our nation back on its road to economic recovery while ensuring that no community, I mean no community, is left behind. Forty years ago, and I formerly worked for a great leader, uh, Congressman Ron Dellums, and I was around during those days. The Congressional Black Caucus was founded. And part of their mission then was to posit, and this is coming from their initial mission statement, to positively influence the course of events pertinent to African Americans and others of similar experience and situation. That was part of the original mission of the Congressional Black Caucus. And so today, our ranks, we've swelled threefold beyond the original 13 founding members. We represent a large segment of America from rural, to urban centers comprising all uh, ethnicities and religious backgrounds. 
We are powerful and dedicated leaders who make up the congressional leadership with chairs of committees and subcommittees over many issues of national importance. And of course, you know, we have been and continue to be the conscience of the Congress because of our unyielding commitment to all of our communities and to our entire nation. We know that our mission really is to help our country become a more perfect union. So thank you all for your commitment to continuing to work with us to improve our communities, both here at home and abroad. Your presence this week really does reflect um, your commitment to collaborate, not only with the CBC, but with the entire global community to reinvest, rebuild, and renew for a stronger America. Thank you again very much for being here, and we look forward to hearing from you also as we move forward uh, and have a very exciting weekend. May God bless you. Thank you so very much, Congresswoman, Madam Chair. I, uh, as promised, ladies and gentlemen, you came today to this, uh, this opening panel or panels that will take place um, to hear how we break the cycle of poverty, but we have pulled together um, with some of the strongest leaders on the face of the earth and definitely leaders here um, in the capital city. I will not take a long time, but I will tell you that we have um, the majority leader of the United States Senate that serves um, from the great state of Nevada, who has been not only a leader in defending and fighting against the privatization of Social Security, uh, but has also been a strong voice in making sure that we move forth on the recovery plan to put this country on the right track, and now in the center of the storm and making sure that everyone in America has affordable health care and also making sure that everyone in America has rights as it relates to their health care. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the Majority Leader of the United States Senate, Harry Reid, from the great state of Nevada. How do you like this new facility? For many, many years, events like this had to be conducted off Capitol Hill because there wasn't a room big enough. This visitor center is a story in itself. Um, when I was this little bit of trivia, when I was elected to the Senate, Dale Bumpers was in a kind of a huff. He was senator from Arkansas, and uh, he was trying to get on a different subcommittee on appropriations. He didn't get it, so he gave up the legislative branch appropriations subcommittee chairmanship. So I got that chairmanship immediately coming to the Senate. And one of the, th the first things I did is complain about the east front of the Capitol, how ugly it was. Cars parked, thousands of cars, that asphalt, this beautiful building, and it was, I thought it was really made somewhat ugly as a result of that east front. So the first thing we did is get the cars off, and that took a while to do that. And then we, there was a commission established to do something about a capital visitor center. But it dragged on, and it was just so hard to get it done. And as you'll recall, um, a few years ago, um, 11 years ago, I believe, um, some deranged man attacked the Capitol and killed two police officers. And because of the gallantry of some of the people inside the building, he wasn't able to do more harm to people. As a result of that, we finally decided we had to do something to make the Capitol safe. And this great visitor center has been constructed. It, took, it opened last December 2nd. It, it was um, so long in coming. Now when people come into the Capitol, there's a beautiful film they can see about what experience they will have in the Capitol, what happens inside the Capitol. You can come to the Capitol and buy souvenirs. You can, you can eat. You can go to the restroom, which was a real problem before. Um, there just wasn't, there were no facilities for this. And as part of it, we have this 
auditorium here and Emancipation Hall. So I hope you enjoy your experience here. This is really wonderful uh, addition to the Capitol. Uh, I served in the House of Representatives and at that time had the opportunity to, to uh, have dialogue and meet with and react with the members of the Congressional Black Caucus. It was, it was my introduction to this great organization. It has grown so significantly since I left the House and came to the Senate and the work done is so much more dramatic than it was. And Barbara Lee is to be commended for the great work uh, and her leadership for this organization. Your recent initiative to provide opportunities and pathways out of poverty are really noteworthy. And many of your goals are reflected in some of the key legislation that was or has already been passed and signed into law by President Obama or will soon be debated here in Congress. For example, the Recovery Act. That was directed toward creating jobs. It was a difficult thing to get done. The speaker and I worked to get that done. It was extremely difficult because, we, as you recall, we couldn't get Republicans to join with us. It should have been more robust than what it was, but we are happy with what we got. But because of not getting enough Republicans to support us in this, we had to make it smaller than what we wanted. We only got three Republicans and that out of the entire Congress. Um, this bill has saved and created jobs and increased Pell Grant funding, provided tax cuts for those attending college, provides relief for families by extending the first home buyer tax credit tax credits for families. And one of the first things we did is pass the Children's Health Insurance Program, now ha allowing more than 14 million children to go to the doctor when they're sick or hurt. Uh, <laughs> we passed the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, which more equalizes pay between men and women. We increased the minimum wage, which is, was 10 years in the coming. But our work is far from over. We have so much more to do. Uh, we're now in the process of doing our last step in this battle that we have to win dealing with the health care. We have got to show the American people that we can overcome the power of the insurance industry and the pharmaceutical industry. That's what it's all about. It's interesting to note that the only business in America that is not subject to antitrust laws is the insurance industry, except for Major League Baseball. That's what we're up against. And uh, we, we, we have to show you and the rest of the American people that we can do that, and I believe we can. It's important. <laughs> we have, the state of Nevada leads the nation in uninsured, but as many uninsured as we have in the state of Nevada, African Americans have twice the national average of uninsured. Today in America, 14,000 people will wake up with health insurance. And when the sun goes down, they will have no health insurance. 14,000 people today will lose their health insurance in America. In Nevada, the relatively sparsely populated state, 220 people will wake up this morning with health insurance and go to bed tonight without health insurance. That's what this battle is all about. We now have almost 50 million people with no health insurance. We have millions of others who are underinsured. So this is a battle that we must win. I appreciate the work of this great organization. I look forward to working with you in the years to come. Thank you very much. I know that uh, the speaker is going to get an introduction by Congresswoman Lee, but I want everyone to know here that I've had many partners in my life that I've respected and admired but no one that I've worked with that is better, more caring, and more um, knowledgeable. And I'm trying. The word I'm trying to find is someone who can always get that ball over the goal line, and that's Speaker Pelosi. Thank you very much, Senator Reid, and let me uh, thank you for your leadership and for doing a lot of the heavy lifting uh, in the Senate. And I can just say to you that Senator Reid has been consistent in his support for all of the efforts of the Congressional Black Caucus. Let me take a moment to introduce my colleague, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee from the great state of Texas.
And also our former colleague, who still we consider our colleague here in the House, Congresswoman Eva Clayton from North Carolina. Thank you for being here. I have the privilege now to introduce an individual who is a woman who is a leader who I consider my friend from across the bay from San Francisco, California. Nancy Pelosi, I always say, is the greatest speaker ever. And she continues to soar. Whether, and I have to tell you about our Democratic caucus. Thank God we're a diverse caucus. We have Blue Dogs, New Dems, the Congressional Black Caucus, Hispanic Caucus, Asian Pacific American Caucus, Women's Caucus, I mean, you just name it. Many, many caucuses. I had no doubt that our speaker is the only person in the world that could bring together all of these caucuses in a common agenda to support change for our country. I don't care what issue it is, Speaker Pelosi makes sure that every member of her caucuses, including the Congressional Black Caucus, is sitting at the table talking about the direction we need to go on all of our policy initiatives. She's a woman who understands diversity from her core, from her heart, from her soul. It's, it's so natural for her. And she knows if someone's missing or if some group or organization is not at the table and insists that inclusion be central to what we are doing in the House of Representatives. It's an honor and a pleasure to work with her. Members of the Congressional Black Caucus have worked for Nancy Pelosi for many years. And I can tell you that our agenda never would get through the House if it weren't for our great speaker. She's doing a lot of heavy lifting right now with our uh, health bill, but I tell you, she's doing it. And I know that we're going to have a health bill that's going to have a robust public option in that because she has been working day and night to make sure that happens. Please welcome our great speaker, my friend, our colleague, Congresswoman Speaker Nancy Pelosi from the great city of San Francisco. Thank you very much, Barbara Lee, for your very generous introduction, for your tremendous leadership, for taking us down a, a pathway out of poverty with opportunities for all. Sounds like a, a great American theme, which it is. I'm honored to be here with you, Chairwoman Lee, Chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, with Kendrick Meek, Chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Institute, with my former colleague who is here, has been acknowledged, and with my colleagues who are here. And I know our distinguished majority leader from the House is here, Steny Hoyer, but, and he will be hearing from in, in a moment. But uh, what an honor for me to be here with all of you, uh, to be introduced by a person of, of such exceptional leadership as Barbara Lee, a person who is relentless, persistent, dissatisfied r until uh, we reach the goals that we have established. And Kendrick is a great leader in the Congress, Kendrick Meek. And uh, what is happening with the Congressional Black Caucus Institute is something so remarkable for our country. We're all in his debt and your debt for that as well. Since I've been coming to these meetings as whip leader and now Speaker of the House, uh, we've grown, haven't we? Now we're in the Congressional Visitor Center. And Senator Reid talked about how proud we are of this, and I want to tell you another reason. Terry Rouse, an African-American woman, is the con chief executive office of this Congressional Visitors Center. We want it the best. We want it the best. And one of the first events that we had here to celebrate the opening was to install a statue of Sojourner Truth, of Sojourner Truth. Isn't that exciting? And on that day, we talked about women who had, she, she was part of the suffragette movement as well as the abolitionist movement, but talking about her suffragette works. When Michelle Obama got up to speak at that event, she said, Speaker, I know that the suffragettes would be very proud of you to be speak a woman speaker of the House, but I can't help but think what Sojourner Truth would be thinking to see M Michelle Obama as the first lady of America. <laughs> so this is a place 
where we come to not only celebrate our diversity, but to elevate it for all who visit the capital uh, of the United States to see. We have some very important work to do. And the President stood on the steps of the Capitol and gave his beautiful address, and weren't we all so proud? And 100 days later, Senator Reid talked about what was in the recovery package right away, but 100 days later, he presented, and we passed in the House and the Senate on the same day with Steny Hoyer's leader, Steny's here now, I acknowledge you earlier, Steny, a budget of this president, which was for the first time in years, a president's budget was a statement of our national values. What is important to us as a country is what was the, where the uh, uh, allocations of resources would be put. And that was about creating jobs and turning our economy around and tax cuts for middle income people, taking the leverage had changed from us being here to serve the needs of the top 1% to the leverage changing for us to be here for all Americans under the leadership of Barack Obama. And in that fiscal responsibility, not heaping mountains of debt on the future generations was very essential to that budget. He had three pillars for economic growth, for job creation, and for having a statement of values. One was education, another was health care, the other was energy and climate change to create good paying green jobs. On education, we passed the first pillar of the President's budget last week. Bobby Scott was very instrumental in this, Chaka Fatah from the Appropriations Committee and Barbara and others, very, very, uh, very important legislation. Did you know, it, it, we, uh, I see Marion Wright Edelman here, what an honor for us that you are here. This is a bill about higher education that begins at the earliest stage of a child's development. A bill, did you know this, that has two and a half billion, billion, two and a half billion dollars for minority serving institutions, including our historically black colleges in the legislation so that we can build these institutions to receive the research funds, to be part of the discovery and the invention and the innovation for the future, and we are very, very proud of that. Yesterday, the President spoke at the UN. The House has already passed our energy bill, but about new green, uh, uh, good-paying jobs that take us into another place. And, and since we're all on the ground floor on this, to have good-paying jobs in rural America and in urban America and with opportunity uh, for all. And now, and now, what I told my colleagues last night at a meeting, this is the moment we were born for, to pass health care for all Americans. <laughs> health care for all Americans. This is about liberty and justice for all, that we will end disparities in our health care system that we will end discrimination on basis of pre-existing conditions, asthma, diabetes, health, and heart disease, which are more prevalent in some of our minority communities. This is a, a very, very significant. I believe that the best way to do that and to end pre, uh, discrimination because of pre-existing conditions, and if you lose your job, you lose your insurance, or if you change jobs, you lose your insurance, or ending exorbitant co-pays and the rest of that. I believe the best way to keep the insurance companies honest, as President Obama has said, is a robust public option in the legislation. <laughs> but whatever it is, whatever it is, at the end of the day, which won't be that far off, maybe weeks or a, a few months, but certainly this year, you will see that third pillar a pillar that is essential, the status quo, is not acceptable in health insurance and health cost and health care in America. So that pillar with improved quality, lower cost, expanded coverage, tens of millions of more people covered, and choice retained. If you like what you have, you can keep it. We just want to lower the cost for you so that you can keep it will happen. None of that would be possible, would none of it without the 
extraordinary vision and leadership of the President of the United States. <laughs> None of that would have been possible without your coming together all the time and here, year in and year out, to establish priorities, to fight for them, to fight for America, to live up to our legacy of equality, of opportunity in our country in every way. So I come here to commend your leadership, to thank you, each and every one of you, and welcome you here uh, for what you were doing. Uh, this week, while you were in Washington, we urge you to contact your members on health care. Let them know what you are thinking. Well, this is my personal request. I'm not speaking officially for the organization. But it helps us for you to know your power. Nothing is more eloquent to a member of Congress than the voice of his or her own constituents. Your voice will affect our votes and will, uh, will affect the, the quality of the legislation that we pass. So I'm proud to join your leadership and my colleague, Harry Reid, whom I greatly respect and who will help us pass this education bill and this energy bill and this health care bill, the three pillars of the President's um, uh, budget and of his agenda. It's a pretty exciting time. I'm awfully glad that all of you are here. Make your voices known collectively, but individually or in smaller groups to your members of Congress. And again, let us sing the praises of Chairwoman Barbara Lee and Ch Chairman Kendrick Meek for their extraordinary leadership in the Congress. Thank you for the opportunity to spend time with you. Thank you. Well, welcome. This ALC weekend would only appropriately start here with this conversation. And they have Mary Wright Edelman, and they have all of our panelists, including uh, Robin Talbert from the AARP. We're going to talk from earliest childhood up to uh, our seniors and look at poverty and inextricably intertwined with moving people from poverty to prosperity is education, something I focused on. And I want to bring to you the, the person who's educated me the most. Uh, since I came to the United States Congress. The majority leader, Steny Hoyer, has been the most capable leader in the Congress. There's all this noise and uh, static from time to time. You know, were we going to be able to pass the President's stimulus bill? Uh, but the person who put the votes together and created the process and the rules so that we would go to the floor and pass that historic piece of legislation was our leader, Stinney Hoyer from the, the great state of Maryland. And when the question was, what are we going to be able to pass the budget and the president's significant shift of investments in education and new energy and the like, and Stinney Hoyer again put together the votes on the floor. And so even as you hear some wonder whether we're going to pass health care, as long as you know that Stinney Hoyer is the leader of the majority in the House, uh, you can rest assured that we're going to pass health care. We're going to do it in weeks, not months. So as we go into the holiday season, we're going to have something to truly be thankful for. And all of us should be thankful for the great leadership of this congressman from Maryland who leads the Democrats in the House but reaches out his hand, as he did on yesterday, to the minority party, the Republicans, saying that to the degree that they're willing to work to perfect our union and our nation, we want to work with them. But just as his offer of working with them is true, so is his determination to move our agenda forward is with a certainty, even if they put up not one vote, which they didn't put up a vote on the stimulus or the budget. They may not put up one vote on health care, but Stiddy Hoyer will make sure that we have the votes. Welcome our majority leader. Welcome my friend. Welcome the great congressman from Maryland. My, 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 I'm glad that Reed and Pelosi had left the room because they'd say, hey, what about us? 
And uh, very frankly, whatever I do, uh, I do in concert with our speaker, who is one of the most energetic, focused, uh, as Harry Reid said, uh, successful in accomplishing objectives individuals that I've ever worked with. Uh, I'm, I'm, so for those of you who see her, say that Hoyer said good things about her. Will you please? Uh, Majority Leader Reid, my good and dear friend Barbara Lee, who's the chair of the caucus. Uh, Barbara Lee and I have worked on so many things together. Ron Dellums, uh, with whom she worked and who's uh, uh, such a wonderful leader still in California. He went and made a lot of money. Now he's back in the public sector. We're glad for that. Barbara, thank you for your leadership. Dr. Scott, thank you for your leadership uh, uh, as well of the uh, foundation. My good friend, as you can tell, Chaka and I are pretty good friends. Uh, he's from Philadelphia, just north of uh, us. Uh, Kendrick Meek for his leadership. Uh, and Yvette Clark, wait, is Yvette here? Yvette Clark, for she's co-chair and she's, she's doing something else, making sure this, uh, uh, this weekend goes well. Uh, I am very, so very, very pleased to be here with all of you. Opportunities for all, pathways out of poverty. What an important topic that is for this day, this year, and the context in which we find ourselves as a country. Uh, it's my honor to welcome you to Capitol Hill and join uh, Speaker Pelosi and Congressman uh, and uh, Senator Reid in that. And I want to congratulate the Congressional Black Caucus and the Foundation on this, your 39th annual conference. Now, I haven't been to all 39, but I've been to a lot of them. Uh, and I have always found them inspiring, instructional, uh, and very important to the accomplishment of our legislative agenda. You bring an energy and focus that is absolutely essential. The Congressional Black Caucus is known as the conscience of Congress. And with so many of our fellow citizens in trouble, there is no more important time that I've served in the Congress where raising of consciousness is any more critical. And for the conscience of the Congress, the Black Caucus, uh, to be invigorated by all of you. Because although they can, working day to day, the 42 of them energize those of us who serve with them in the Congress, they are energized and our members are energized, as Nancy said, by each and every one of you talking to your member uh, in their districts, in your districts. It makes a real difference. As the Bible says, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. John Kennedy said, let us go forth to lead the lamb we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. That, in my opinion, is what your weekend is about. The agenda of accomplishing God's work of reaching out to brothers and sisters and lifting them up, of reaching out to make us a better country because every one of our citizens has a better quality of life. That's what your weekend is about. That's what this year is about. That's what the election of Barack Obama was about. And that's what we need to be about as a country. And we need your help in doing that. Face of those facts uh, where poverty is up, unemployment is up, uh, and we need to bring those down where more children are living in poverty uh, than in some period of time. Uh, no person, frankly, in America has focused any more on the issue of children than uh, Marion Wright Edelman, who sits with us today. She has raised consciousness. That's what the Black Caucus is about. That's what this conference is about. That's what we need to be about, as I said, as a country. We must start to address poverty by providing people with high quality education. That means strengthening access to early education. I don't know how many of you read the book by Jonathan Cazal, Death at an Early Age. It was not actual death, it was death by negligence. Death by a perception that some people could not perform. Uh, death by a uh, uh, a arrogance and prejudice directed at young people. When I say young people, age two, three, four, when science tells us they are absorbing, learning, and uh, fashioning their character and their uh, future. We must make health care coverage, as you've heard Speaker Pelosi say, 
a reality for all Americans. Just this month, the study showed that 45,000 of our fellow Americans die early each year because they don't have health insurance, because they weren't able to get preventive care. They didn't get early diagnosis. In the richest country on the face of the earth, 45,000 people in America die early unnecessarily because they didn't have health care. You heard uh, Leader Reed say that uh, uh, 200 plus people in his state of Nevada, 14,000 every day lose uh, their health insurance in America. Finally, we must expand economic opportunity. We must ensure that all Americans have access to capital. Uh, there's some folks in my district say uh, equality was fine and we need to work for equality. But Congressman, we want equity as well. We want a stake in the economy. We want to be able to create our own businesses. We want to get capital to do so. I know that's on your agenda, because if we're going to give opportunity, it's not only opportunity to participate, it's opportunity to succeed, to profit, to create jobs, uh, to be successful. Together with the leadership of the Congressional Black Caucus and the determination of all of you, we will provide a pathway for poverty. Saturday night, I was at a dinner in Prince George's County. We were celebrating the 100th anniversary uh, of the NAACP, founded in 1909. Uh, founded, uh, uh, obviously, to give people of color equity. We've come a long way in that century. Barack Obama, on election night, talked about that woman who had been alive for 100 years and the sweep of history that she had seen. It's been an extraordinary year. Uh, from November to, to now, uh, an extraordinary historical year. America is facing one of the greatest economic challenges we've faced uh, in over three quarters of a century. It's absolutely essential that all of us come together in a country where we see fear and anger and, yes, even prejudice being demonstrated more and more frequently and more and more openly. We need to come together as a nation as people, and with Barack Obama say, yes, we can. Yes, we will. The Johnson brothers urged us to face the rising sun of our new day begun, marching on till victory is won. Victory is won for every one of our people, every one of our young people every one of our working people, or people who want to work, and every one of our old people. Thank you. Thank you for being our conscience. Thank you for being our encouragement. Thank you for being our leaders. God bless you. Godspeed. Keep on keeping on. Thank you so very much, Majority Leader. And as promised, um, having leaders uh, come to speak to this panel on poverty, on how we. Um, to Nancy Pelosi, who has to uh, pull together um, the various caucuses that Chairwoman Barbara Lee talked about, um, of getting them to move in the right direction, um, to work in a bipartisan way um, with those on the other side of the aisle to achieve um, bipartisan votes in the House of Representatives, and Steny Hoyer, who actually uh, carry out the task of um, running the U.S. House of Representatives as a majority leader, along with our very own uh, whip James Clyburn from South Carolina that whipped the votes up to make sure that the votes are there once all of this work is done. Uh, what I would like to do at this time is move right into the, the, the area of the panel one, and I'm going to call Dr. Scott up, who's going to 
kick off uh, that part of our uh, summit here today. Dr. Elsie Scott, President and CEO of the Black Caucus Foundation. Okay, to keep the program running, let me just do a few housekeeping, but I would like to ask the first panel to start coming to the stage so we can uh, maximize our time here. 